Now our next challenge is to find V in terms of T. And we'll see a lot of similarities to the situation with no gravity, but there's a lot of differences as well. So here I've already drawn my free body diagram. I again want to write out Newton's second law, which is right here. The net force in the y direction equals MAY. I'm making down positive because that's the direction of acceleration. And now we just want to rewrite this in more specifics. The force in the y direction is MG, which is positive. I've made down positive. Minus BV equals MA. And unlike the specific situation of terminal velocity, I don't have acceleration zero here anymore. It is going to be accelerating until it reaches terminal velocity. I've dropped the y subscripts because we're only going to be moving in the y direction here, only accelerating that way. So now I want to make this into a differential equation, which it's almost there. I've got mg minus bv equals m times, how do I make that into a derivative? It's just dv dt. Now, as before, a good mnemonic is we want to keep the right side clean. And by clean, I just mean as neat as possible. So what I want to do is, as before, divide both sides by m. That'll give me mg over m minus bv over m equals dv dt. There's my differential equation. Uh, it's got a derivative in it. I'm going to simplify this a little bit. That cancels that. I get g minus bv over m, or b over mv, we can write it, equals dv dt. Again, I'm going to use separation of variables. I've got to get all the t's on one side and all the v's on the other side. It is a little bit more complicated for this situation, though, because I don't have v by itself. What I have is this whole expression right here that includes v in it. So here's how I've got to deal with this situation. I'm going to multiply both sides by dt. That gives me dt on the left. And I'm going to divide both sides by this whole term or this whole expression right there. This gives me dv over this whole mess right here. g minus b over m times v. And this is why this takes a little more practice because you've got to know exactly what to do for this situation. By the way, I have seen this on several AP exams. So don't think it's not going to be there because, uh, especially if you don't know how to do it, generally the rule of thumb is if you don't know how to do it, it's going to be on there. So let's prepare very well for this. We'll need some practice. Now, this is pretty close to what I want, but notice that what I seek, I, I, what I want is something like uh, I need du over u, some kind of form that looks like du over u. And this is not du over u. Uh, if it were dv over v like it was last time, we'd be all set, but it's not. It's dv over something like v. So what I've got to do is to figure out how to rewrite this whole thing so on the right I do get something like d over, du over u on the right. That way I'll be able to integrate, integrate both sides and get ln of u, whatever u is. So I've got to do this right here. I've got to use substitution. And this is something that comes with practice, but here is what you do. I need this to be in the form of du over u. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let u equal this messy expression right here, g minus b over m times v. That is what I'm going to call u. Now I've got to find out what du would look like. Du is, well, what is it? Now, if you don't know how to find du from this expression, here's an easy way to do it. You just find du dv. In other words, the first derivative with respect to v of u. Here's u right up here, so I want to find the first derivative of that with respect to v. What's the first derivative of a constant with respect to v? That's just zero. What's the first derivative of this with respect to v? That's just b over m. So we can see that the du dv is just negative b over m. Then to find du, du is just negative b over m times dv. We just multiply both sides by dv. So I found du. And what I'm really looking for is I want to get this expression 
right here, I want to use substitution so I can get du over u. Now I've got u here on the bottom, so I'm going to rewrite this whole mess here so we can see that. What I've got is dt equals dv over g minus b over m times v, and I've re-expressed that as This is just u, and I've got dv up here, but I want this to be du over u. Right now, I've just got this dv over u. So what do I got to do to both sides to make this into du? I'm going to rewrite it one more time here. dt equals dv over d over u, rather, because this, I've just defined that as u. What do I got to do to this, this dv, to make it into du? Well, notice right here, du is just negative b over m times dv. So if I made this into negative b over m, I multiply it right there, negative b over m times that side. But then, of course, I've got to do negative b over m times this side as well. Now, notice what I have. I've got du on top. That's negative b over m dv, and I've got u on the bottom, du over u. This is just du over u now. So I'm going to now progress to integrating. And I'm going to substitute, notice that this thing is du. So I'm just going to rewrite this as negative b over m dt equals du over u. And again, this is only done because I defined this nasty thing on the bottom right here. I defined that as u. And then I figured out what I had to do to both sides to get du on top. Okay, so now I can go ahead and integrate both sides. And that's what I wanted to do. Integrate both sides. And we'll substitute u and du. We'll substitute in what we need uh, back for those a bit later. So when I integrate both sides... This side, again, I get negative b over m times t plus c. And I'm going to put all my constants of integration in this c here for both sides. And this is equal to ln of u. And again, uh, u is always going to be positive. How do I know that? Well, if you look at what u actually is, just as a reminder, u equals g minus b over m times v. That's what u is. Notice that this will always, again, be positive. So although officially it's the natural log of u, because u is always positive, I don't need those absolute value signs. So then, again, I go through this whole thing. I'm going to raise e to the power of both sides. So that gives me e, or e to the negative b over m t plus c, equals e to the ln u. And this is similar as before. And that gives us, uh, again, this is going to be, uh, I'm just going to jump to this step because e to, this will be e to the negative b over m times t times e to the c, which I'm just going to call k just like before. This becomes k e to the negative b over m t. And this will become u. So this gives us k e to the negative b over m t equals what u is from before is g minus b over mv. So now we're getting closer. We do have to figure out what k is, just like before. To find k, we got to appeal to initial conditions. So our initial conditions, if you recall, are that we drop this thing from rest such that at t equals 0, what did v equal? We dropped it from rest, so v equals 0. That just means this, that k, whatever k is, we're figuring that out, e to the negative b over mt, which where t is 0, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute in that 0 there, equals g minus b over m times 0. That means that, hey, this is 0. This is 1. That means that k equals g. So here's what we finally have. We're getting very, very close to the end here. g 
e to the negative b over mt equals g minus b over mv. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to just solve this whole thing for v. That's really all I want to do. So I'm going to do a little bit of sleight of hand here. I'm going to just move the g over on this side. So that gives me uh, g e to the negative b over mt minus g equals negative b over mv. And then I'm just going to solve for v by multiplying both sides by m over b. And that gives me m over b negative. But I'm going to just switch these around so it's uh, g minus g e to the negative b over mt. So that's, that's how I got rid of the negative. I just switch these left and right. So it's uh, instead of a minus b is b minus a, which is the negative of it. And that equals v. I'm going to write this one more time in an interesting way. Uh, I'm going to write this like this. Just going to pull out the factor out the g there. v equals mg over b times 1 minus e to the negative b over mt. And this is my final solution for the velocity. And a couple things to notice about this are as follows. What is this factor that's in front right here, mg over b? Well, if you recall from the last video, that's just v terminal. So v could also be expressed as v terminal times 1 minus e to the negative b over m or bt over m. One little mnemonic that I like here uh, to make sure we've done this right uh, these little tiny exponents right here, they're itty bitty, itty bt, bt right there. If you've done this right, you'll end up with bt as an itty bt, itty bitty uh, up on the top there. That'll uh, help you remember if you've done this right. A uh, little helpful mnemonic there. But let's see if this makes sense. Now let's do it by doing a graph here. Now this time, at t equals zero, what is our velocity? Well, as you recall from the in initial situation, our velocity starts off at zero. And let's make sure that makes sense. At t equals zero, this is one minus e to the zero. It's one minus one. The initial velocity is right there at, at v equals zero. Now, at infinite time, what is this thing doing? As you might suspect, it's going to approach v terminal. It's equal to mg over b. That's what that line is right there. And it's going to approach that like so. Same kind of characteristic curve, except it's inverted in this case. And it keeps getting closer to V term, but it never gets there. So how is it possible that when we drop this piece of paper right here, it seems like if you drop this from a meter high, it seems like by after, you know, after dropping half a meter, it's already at V terminal. It's because very quickly we get up to 99.99% of V terminal. And yes, we never actually get there, but we get so close to it in such a small amount of time that it's effectively there. We can't uh, measure the difference between our uh, velocity and V terminal when it gets that close. For lab purposes, it's close enough. So here's our graph of V versus T. And this, either of these, are our equation for V in terms of T.